everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back to another junk journal with me. In today's episode, I am working in my soft cover journal that I created in the Basics of Junk Journaling series. And this journal is documenting all sorts of horticulture and vegetables that are around my house or that I'm currently working on. So I have printed off a bunch of pictures of some flowers and some vegetables, and I am currently trying to figure out how I want to display these two pictures. One is of a daylily, and the other one is a perennial that I planted a long time ago that is very hardy and keeps coming up. So I'm just trimming the pictures down so they equal each other, and I'm going to put them inside of that pocket on the left-hand side. But before I do that, I want to line the backs with some paper. So I go through my stash and I find some old drawing paper, and I decide to glue that to the back of the picture, and then I'm going to start my journaling on the back. The pocket was already inside of the journal when I created it. I used some ruffled avocado dyed paper. That's what this paper is. The pink hue is from avocado skins and pits. And so it's a really dusty pink. It's very, very pretty. And so it just, this whole journal screams floral to me. I don't know. It's just a very soft and feminine journal and I really enjoy working in it. I could have just kept going at this journaling session, but I had to stop because I had to cook dinner. <laughs> so um, I'm just trimming down my picture here and I am going to do, like I said earlier, I'm going to do my journaling on the other side with my trusty pencil. I like to use pencil for my journaling. It's just what I'm more comfortable using um, versus pen because I know that I can erase it if I make a mistake. And with pen, there's like way too much pressure for me. Um, plus, I just, I've always been a pencil person. I just really like writing in pencil. I just feel more comfortable doing that. So as soon as I trim these sides down, I'm going to do a little bit of journaling about these two first uh, perennials of the season. I didn't have to put a lot of thought into this page and it's always good to start with pages like that that are very straightforward because then you're not stuck or frustrated uh, early on with things not coming together. So it was good to have a very simple straightforward page to start off with. But I knew that I wanted to decorate this pocket with something and so I decided to use this little girl who is holding these flowers and sort of looking at them in amazement and this is from a new digital kit in my Etsy store called Eyes of Wonder. I mentioned this in a previous video, but I didn't really go into it, I don't think, in depth. I recently came across a saying um, on Instagram that read, if you look at the world through eyes of wonder, you will start to see everything that is wonderful. And that really resonated with me, that whole idea of sort of slowing down and really looking at things and appreciating things. And it's just something that I'm trying to incorporate into my everyday life. And so it's naturally going to be also a part of my journals, a big part of my journals, especially in the summertime when there is more to look at um, just naturally given my climate in the area that I live. So in the winter, there is there is a lot to look at. I have to say this past winter, I did a lot of looking around and there was quite a bit to see. But for this particular journal and the ones that are going to be following this one, I thought that this sort of a kit would be something that is very special. So as a part of this kit, um, I also have this poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay, and it's called Afternoon on a Hill. And it is the same idea about stopping and looking at things and savoring the moment. And I just felt like it really summed up the whole epitome of the kit itself, which is comprised of different images of women and animals and insects looking at things in wonder. So I'll link that down below if you're interested in checking that out. So I decided just to showcase the poem itself on this page because the poem, like I said, really did summarize my feelings on this 
particular journal um, itself, but I just trim it down. I printed it out in two different sizes. So I use the larger one and I just trim it and then I frame it the top and the bottom with some vintage wallpaper scraps that I have just sitting in a little bin off to the side of my craft table. And then I just glue it down on the page. I'm ready now to move on to my next page, which is going to be about my vegetables. And so I have some spring vegetables that are doing quite well. These peas, I've never grown peas before. And I don't know, I seem to do well with peas and beans. I, they must be really hardy. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. It has to do with the fact that they're probably like, you'd have to like pour poison on it to kill it. So <laughs> anyone could be successful with peas or beans, but they are really thriving. And I also harvested some spinach. So I'm just talking, and my beets are coming up too. So that's what these three pictures are about. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to display them. And so I have this um, kit that is in my Etsy store and it's called um, In the Garden. And I have all these different gardening uh, images and so I'm thinking of using one as maybe a little bit of a pocket and I do like this Burpees new um, and choice plants and it I think the color goes well with the page below it and I like the size of it the length of it and I just like the way that it looks so I decide to use that and I do frame it with a little bit of lace just to soften it up just a little bit and then I line the backs of my pictures I'm not going to do my journaling on the back of the picture like I did with the first page I actually as I'm going through this kit and I had just I print my kits out and then I cut them I do this with all the kits so then I have them just in a folder and then I could page you know kind of flip through it as I'm working in a in uh, in a journal and it just makes it a whole lot easier so I had already this these peas picture that is from that kit I had already lined it with some coffee dyed paper and did some sewing around it I did that with a few of them um, just because one night I thought that I would do that for some and so I decided to use that as my journaling card and so I'm just going to journal on the back of it and I really like the way that they all look stacked in there with um, this burpee image as the pocket
So I just lined the backs of the two smaller pictures with some uh, book paper, but I not really, I think it's kind of boring. So I'm just going back through those, that kit, those pictures, and I find this image of these gardening tools that I'm going to put on the back of the spinach. And I actually have a picture of some beets that I'm going to put on the back of the beet picture. And this was one that I had already did a little bit of, um, sewing around it and added the coffee dyed paper to the back of it. So that's going to go right in the middle and I really like the way that looks. I think that's super cute. And then I just trim up the gardening tools one and I put that on the back of my spinach. Once I finish that, I'm going to move on to the final pages in this junk journal with me session. And that is documenting my roses that have just blown up overnight. They just exploded. And I'm not quite sure why. It's been so cold here, but they're really thriving and doing well. And it just appeared overnight. So I have this very large picture of one of the roses opening. And I decide to put that on the flip side right there. I'm going to trim that down. And then I decide to put the other two smaller pictures on that little flap of that uh, sheet music. And then I'm going to do my journaling on this page right here, but I'm going to use some vintage stationery. And this is in my Etsy store too, if you're interested. And this is the one I end up using is the butterfly one. And this is from the French manicure kit. I'm just going to trim it down. I'm trying to see, do I want to use the envelope or what do I want to do? But I decide that I trim it down. I leave the length so I have more journaling space and I create a little tuck spot using some wallpaper snippets that's in my Etsy store as well. And I just glue it to the top and I tuck it in there and it's the perfect little spot for some journaling. I stick a piece of paper in there just so it dries and if it gets stuck to the paper I don't care I'll just pull the paper out at least it's not my actual journaling card and while I'm letting that dry I'm going to trim down my big picture so it fits perfectly on that page I'm going to add a little bit of ripped up white paper doily to the edges just to frame it a little bit and to add a little bit of texture and I add a little doily to the vintage sheet music and it creates a pocket and I end up gluing the two smaller pictures together and then just sticking it inside of that doily pocket.
I have this picture of this little girl and she is just so sweet and she is from that eyes of wonder kit too and there's four little pictures of her doing different things and in this picture she's like gazing out the window and there's these flowers they look kind of like roses to me I'm not sure but I imagine this is me gazing at my window looking at my roses because they're so beautiful so I just trimmed her down and I'm gonna add her to that little pocket but she looks a little lonely so I decide to add two fussy cut butterflies, one to the left side and one to the right side. I use my moth and butterfly specimen cards. This is from my Etsy store too. There are 55 different images or cards, I should say, in there. And most of them have two to a page. So there's like over 100 butterflies on them. And they range from super large to super small. So I knew that I was going to be able to find the perfect size. Once I finish cutting these little butterflies out, I glue them down. And one thing I like to do with butterflies, and I do this a lot in journals, is that I kind of fold them to give them a little bit of a 3D effect. And I only glue them right in the middle, so it looks like they're kind of flying off the page. I do this all the time, and I never have any problem with closing the journal. It doesn't really impact it that much because they are on the thicker side, and I had folded them. So if they look a little smushed, I just kind of fluff them up a little bit. But quite honestly, I never really have a problem. It's just a neat little technique technique to use to make it look like your butterflies are flying off your journaling page. That's going to wrap up this week's junk journal with me. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next week with some more junk journaling videos. And of course, next Sunday for the next episode of junk journal with me. Take care. Mm -hmm.